guys, I want to help you out. I want to reach out to you. And if you don't like that, you can suck. And welcome to another episode of Reaching Out. It's your boy Scully. And I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to feature a few people today. Quite a few more than I used than I'm used to. So, we're going to start with Santa with T. Because he created possibly the best Spongebill YouTube poop I have ever seen in my life. I saw this back in 2010. It's funny then. It's still funny now. I want you to... I'm, I'm not going to show you the, the video of it. I'm just going to show you the audio. Okay? And, and I'm going to upload this on a Creative Commons license because... Standard YouTube licenses are more than likely, you know, they're jailbait or trap bait or whatever the hell. Okay. Check this out. See you in the air, Mr. Krabs. Oh, boy. Hold on yeah. there, SpongeBob. Oh, yeah. Take that pile of shit up with you. Oh, Mr. Krabs. Taking out the trash, taking out the trash. Oh. Mm. Dumpster writing! Squidward smells! Bad Crabs is a... Do you kiss your mother with that mouth? Recently... Hi, garbage man! Hi, Crick! Hey, Pat, do you know what this word means? Crabs... Nah, -uh, not that word. That word. Bitch! Oh, hey! I think I know what that means. That's one of those sets enhancers. Sets enhancers? <laughs> Hello, customers! Nice gang day we're having, huh? <laughs> hey, Patrick, how the fuck are you? Pretty fucking good, SpongeBob. Well, uh, I oh, thought this was a gutter mouth convention, not a restaurant. Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> Squidward, how the fuck are ya? SpongeBob and friend! Front and center! Why I gotta kill the toy up for using such language? There ain't nothing fancy about that word! You mean fuck? Yes, that one! Now quit saying that! It's a good word! Thanks, Scrippy Sponge! Time to take out the trash! Never, and I mean never, use number 11, you necks! You're gonna paint the crusty crab from top to bottom, top to bottom. Whoa! Oh, oh my motherfucking foot! What the genius motherfucker! Hey, you're struggling up here! Get out of water! Oh, you little dicks! Stop grabbing foot! It's all bad, Jane Patrick! It's all bad, Oh, I can't, I can't fucking, oh... <laughs> oh, God, that brings back memories, doesn't it? Thanks to YouTube Poop Reuploader for reuploading this. Of course, he defines Santa with teeth as Santa with guns because that's what he was known as before he became Santa with teeth, or after he became Santa with teeth, he changed his name to Santa with guns. I don't know though. Yeah, it figures itself out. But you see all the comments right there, don't you? Of course you do, because it's common freaking sense. And now we're going to take a look at some really beautiful artwork, courtesy of a few DeviantArt friends of mine. Let's get started, shall we? Of course. Let's get started. <laughs> oh my! Oh my God! You, you gotta, you gotta check this guy out. This guy, Johnny Rambo. This guy is a certified freaking G. And a bona fide star. You, you, you guys, you gotta check this out. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Seriously, you gotta check this guy out. Oh man, who you, you guys, man. I'm telling you. You gotta check this guy. You gotta check him out. Listen to this guy. Listen to him. Listen. 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 
listen. Just, just listen. Okay, fuck the crew. Crew. It's more than our 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 crew. I tell you, he is. You take Donald Trump. You take Donald Trump. He's a proud American. He's a proud American. He, he, he did everything. He, he, he did everything just like America. You know? And I tell you something. You know? And I tell you something else. His name is fucked. Maybe he's a teacher responsibility to find Menard. If I'm a student, I'm a big ass mistake of America. And I tell you something. And I tell you something. And I tell you something. I tell you something. Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton. A new war. A new war. She's a whore. A new war. She's a whore. hashtag and handle actually on Twitter. This is a guy who I believe made probably one of the most interesting statements I have ever heard in my entire freaking life. Listen to this guy.
Okay? He says this. The loons are now in control of the mainstream media, academia, professional sports, and Hollywood, and are in the process of destroying the country in which we love. The way that he feels about it all is as follows. If you are for men going into ladies' bathrooms, you might be a jackass. If you were for hiking federal income taxes, you might be a jackass. If you are for same-sex and transgender marriages, you might be a jackass. If you are against police and law enforcement, you might be a jackass. If you are for other nations having tariffs on U.S. products, but the U.S. not having tariffs on this, you might be a jackass. If you offer open borders and no control of immigration, you might be a jackass. If you offer open and completely legal use of marijuana, you might be a jackass. If you are opposed to a strong U.S. military, you might be a jackass. If you are for disrespecting the American flag, you might be a jackass. If you are for a bilingual America, you might be a jackass. If you want big government to control most of your life, you might be a jackass. If you are for high taxes to provide free health care, free food, free housing, free education for illegal immigrants like a former president of the United States and Barack Obama, you might be a jackass. If you are for instructing and impeaching a duly elected president of the United States, you might be a jackass. Notice how I'm pulling a Jeff Foxworthy here. If you are for the removal of the Ten Commandments from all government buildings, <laughs> you might be a jackass. If you are for the condemnation and violent suppression of political opinion of politics, you might be a jackass. If you offer the complete abolishment of the Second Amendment granting Americans the right to bear arms, you might be a jackass. If you think the lack of action to prevent daily black killings in Chicago is tolerable because the city and state are run by Democrats, you might be a jackass. If you offer removal of all statues and references to our founding fathers who happen to have slaves, you might be a jackass. If you offer Cuba continuing to be a communist dictatorship, you might be a jackass. We're getting into the nitty gritty now, aren't we? Okay. Continuing to Pick a page out of Jeff Foxworthy freaking textbook, or should I say Jeff Foxworthy? Because I don't give a 20th century fox. If you think it is better for the U.S. of A. to negotiate international trade agreements with many foreign nations all at once rather than one nation at a time, <laughs> you might be a jackass. If you're for Islamic-controlled American neighborhoods that enforce Sharia law and are no-go zones for our police, you might be a jackass. If you think Obama is responsible for America's 
current economic boom, you might be a jackass. It seems like this free healthcare housing and institution to illegal immigrants rather than anything in black. You might be a jackass. If you think all men are automatically guilty just because they're men, you might be a jackass. If you are for Iran having an atomic bomb in five years and the destruction of Israel, you might be a jackass. If you are in favor of sanctuary cities that harbor, aid, and protect immigrants who have broken American laws, uh, you might be a jackass. If you think Kanye West is not entitled to support President Donald Trump because Kanye is a black man, you might be a jackass. If you view socialism favorably, then you must be a loony liberal jackass democrat! <laughs> and now we get to the new kind of art. Right? Yeah. Okay. My DeviantArt friends are going to be featured in this segment. First of all, a traditional artist and hobbyist named Mark Bouchard, also known by his DeviantArt usernames House of Usher 01 and House of Usher 11. He creates these traditional artworks, which I think are masterfully done. I mean, you 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 gotta you gotta be a top level artist to pull this kind of stuff off, you know? It just takes literally decades of mastering your craft to understand this, right? Now, this guy's artwork, he, he features these characters called the raccoons. And Believe it or not, this guy, I, I believe this guy has been doing these sorts of artworks now for about 30 years. So he's, he's got to be in his 40s or 50s or something, I don't know. But, but this guy, this guy has literally spent a generation's worth coming up with artworks like these. And I've got to tell you straight up, this guy's work is top freaking notch. I mean, just just look at it. It's beautiful. I'll never be able to draw this good again. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I I did draw half as good back in 2012 when I was creating those fan comics for my friend Beck Keep and Rick Fortner for a Lunatics Tale back when it was a web comic. Now they've put that on hold, seemingly, in favor of a novel adaptation, meaning it's going to be a book. But back to the point. These particular artworks that I'm showing to you now, these are just 13 of his best works. And he's got... I would say he's got literally dozens and dozens of them, I would say. And this guy has spent a lifetime's worth of dedication towards his craft. Needless to say, he's perfected it in pretty much every single way imaginable. And it's really, really crazy to think about just knowing how, how excellently crafted his artwork is. I mean, this is craftsmanship at its traditional art best. And let me tell you now, let me tell you, this guy is completely 
insane. And I say that in a very, very positive light, because this guy's artwork is literally out of this world. It is unbelievably impressive. And I'm not just saying that either. I actually mean it. And let me tell you now, this guy, it's, it's, it's crazy because this guy has, has such talent. He's got more talent in one finger than I do in my entire body. And that's saying a lot. That's saying volumes right there. That speaks so many volumes, so many tomes. I can't even tell you, man. My God. I mean, just, just, just one look at his gallery and your draw, your jaw will literally hit the freaking floor. This guy's work is that freaking good. It's that freaking good. And now we go on to another artist friend of mine on DeviantArt named Arna532096 from Iceland. Keep in mind, this is the same country that gave us Lazy Town. Which I believe, in all seriousness, is the greatest freaking kids show in the history of television. Of any country. Because Iceland's got their stuff together, man. They've got their stuff together. Now, I've featured six of her best works. And let me tell you, she's a digital artist. She's got her head straight. And you know, she's not perfect, per se. Nobody is perfect. Nobody's God. They're only just as much a part of them as I am. But, you see, this woman's artwork, I mean, just look at it. Look at this. This is crazy. And, and the sketches, and the sketch that she did right there on the bottom, right next to her ident, that sketch is so immaculately executed, you know, something like this would take me literally two hours to do. Something like this would take her like 40 or 50 minutes, so about half the time. Because she's that good at it, because she's mastered her craft, clearly. And you know... These, these colored drawings that she does, the other five drawings in particular, not only are they done with such unique precision, granted in some of these, the proportions are just a little bit microscopically somewhat, well, they're not inaccurate in any way. If they are, we won't notice it. Because her art is that good. But, but this woman's art, has a lot of heart to it, it's got a lot of execution to it, a lot of style, a lot of grace to it, it's got that pizzazz that an artist looks for in one's own art. And she does horses a lot, I've noticed. She does equestrian art, and that's really, really good. Because, you know, I used to be around horses a lot some three years ago. And I know this because I saw it myself. I've been taking care, I took care of horses for like three years in a group home setting. And it gave me a sense of sensibility, you know? Wow. I, I can't even, you know, you, you have to come up with these kinds of artworks. And, and then it just becomes so clear to you, man. It becomes so freaking clear to you. Look at this one drawing, right there beside that brown horse. That's just, that is freaking, that's crazy, man. Look at this. This one is absolutely, I, I don't even, I don't think I can find the words for it, but it's good. It's really, really good. I can tell you that. One look at her gallery. And you'll never look at art the same way again. You'll have a new respect for it. I promise you that. I can promise you right now. Once you look at a gallery like that of Arna 53296, you'll have a newfound respect for art. 
moving on to another artist of mine, another friend of mine, and and this friend of mine, I can't I can't remember particularly this artist's name, but you know what? I'm gonna research that Deviant Art Friends of Mine's page, and I'm gonna figure it out. I'll be back. Three hours later. Ah, I finally found it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it took me long enough, but I figured out the guy who made Bloodlust and Powder Snow and Jack and Lily and Angelica and Luna and Nick and the other three deviations that you see here is a deviant art user of the name Ender Jack 2000. I finally figured it out. Yay! But but anyway, let's let's get to it. Now those. Those cards that he made, those cards in particular, let me tell you, these cards are not only done in a chibi style, but they're done so remarkably well that, hell, you might even say that they're pretty top notch at that, right? Which is a word that, which is a phrase that I use to, to show my appreciation for something of this caliber, top notch. Because that's what these pictures from Ender Jack are. They're absolutely, undoubtedly top notch. You know? I mean, seriously though. This guy, <laughs> this guy's artwork is just, and especially these three drawings, or actually, no, these two in particular. But these things that he does, I mean, he, he's a hobbyist. So he just does it on a whim. He does it because he feels like it. And even when he feels like it, he comes up with something pretty genial. Like something straight out of, say, Rob Deerdeck's playbook, Ridiculousness, Fantasy Factory, Robin Big, I don't know. It's just something I thought I'd just point out, because, you know, because I like Ridiculousness. But Ender Jack's artwork is really, really impressive. I don't really think I can find an appropriate enough word to describe it, but if I could, I'd have to say something along the lines of, say, trendy. Because chibis are trendy. They're very, very trendy, and these particular works that he did, in particular, as well as the rest of his gallery, is pretty damn unique, I'd say. Pretty freaking unique. And you know, Ender Jack, I don't know how long he's been on YouTube, on YouTube, I don't know how long he's been on DeviantArt, why'd I say YouTube? What the hell is wrong with me today? But, this guy's artwork is pretty impressive. I gotta hand it to him, this guy really knows what he's doing, and in a big way, no less. Quite a big way, I should say. And you know, it's, it's so funny to me. It's, it's funny that I, that I feature him on Reaching Out to the Unfamous this episode, because his art is the epitome of feeling comfortable in your own skin. When you make art like this, you feel comfortable in your own skin, and you can be the best version of yourself that you can be. And his artwork is pretty indicative of that. And you know... Ender Jack 2000's work, pretty top of the line, even if it's just chibi artwork, even if it's just in a bobblehead style, it's pretty top notch, especially that last one on the bottom left, that one is pretty good, that one, quite impressive. Which brings me to the last artist that I'm going to feature in this episode. And that's another friend of mine. I think you know who this friend is. She goes by J. Robin. DeviantArt user, small and silent. And this Deviant artist, I mean, well, I, I don't know. I think I might have featured her in a previous episode, but if I didn't, at least I'm covering my bases now. But... This deviant artist in particular is really, really good. You know, 
this, despite the fact that she mostly does literature. But you know, poetry and free verse go hand in hand with her because she speaks her thoughts in these poems. These emotional free verse poems that she writes, she speaks her thoughts. And deep down, her thoughts are my thoughts, and my thoughts are her thoughts, and our thoughts are the thoughts of every altist on the Asperger spectrum, either on the lower or the higher end. And it's crazy to me to think about it, but at the same time, her art, it's impressive. It's, it's amazing to think that she can come up with this artwork on a whim and then a photograph of this nature which which I edited of course to make it a part of this screenshot or or this this compilation of her best artwork but she does it all man she does shirt designs she does digital drawings traditional drawings sketches she does poetry, she does photography, she does it all. And I'm merely just an extension of her. You know? She was basically me when I was about five or so years younger in a group home setting. But the thing is, Small and Silent is from Belgium. J. Robin is really unique at her craft and she expands her horizons to a point in which she's become an all-around artist. Kind of like me. And her art really relates to me in a way that I can understand, but at the same time it relates in a way that many people like her and I can understand, and it figures, doesn't it? You know? And this young woman, she has her whole life ahead of her, and God bless her. Especially, you know, this, this center bottom picture says a whole hell of a lot more than I can say. The picture in itself is self-explanatory. J. Robin explains in this picture, My feelings are locked, but in my box there are cracks. I tell you, if that's not the way to sum up every human being in a nutshell, then quite frankly, I don't know what the hell is. Because let me tell you, as much as I'm a man, I can tell you without question, that picture relates to so many people. Like, you, you'd, have to, you'd have to literally look at yourself in the mirror a good long time and then look at a picture like this and say to yourself, my feelings are locked, but in my box there are cracks. And right then and there, without question, you would understand exactly what J. Robin goes through. And I'm just going to tell you that now. Not even going to lie about it. That's how I feel every day. And that's going to do it for this episode of Reaching Out, which has been sponsored by absolutely no one, except for God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, and fate and space and time and nature. Because those are the seven forms of God, primarily, that make up reality as to what it is. Aside from that, have a nice, beautiful afternoon, and happy freaking Halloween!
you want my permission to download this video, message me on any of my social media channels and ask for it, and I'll give you my IK. And above all else, don't be a jackass. Please, be real. Don't steal.